everybody and welcome back to my channel this definitely is a very weird setup for me normally i have makeup on or a nice background or whatever and to be honest i don't feel up to doing that today <laughs> um, so you're just gonna have me in all my natural glory this is a spontaneous video i haven't planned any of it i just wanted to sit and have a chat because i have been a little bit mia from youtube I'm trying my best to kind of stick on social media and things like that but my mojo for filming our everyday lives has just gone and I found that a real struggle to cope with because I love YouTube, I love creating and documenting my girl's childhood, my life in those moments, I even documented like my mum's death for goodness sake and I just feel life has sort of spiralled away from me a little bit. Over the past few months, it's been like just over nine months since my mum died and I have definitely felt the waves of grief like sometimes I'm absolutely soaring I'm happy I feel content with my life obviously my mum is missing from it so there's always that kind of tainted part of it I feel like ecstatic you know so excited for like Christmas and birthdays and holidays and things like that and then then on the other hand there's days a little bit like today actually where I just can't be bothered like I want to just stay in my bed I don't want to get up in the mornings you just want to hide away I can't be bothered with you know all the chores and things like that I've come to realize that these are very normal emotions and I don't need to be scared of them I sort of noticed the signs I've noticed the whole heaviness on my shoulders on my head on like the brain fog and tiredness and the irritability and all of those things but just the sadness was really hard to get out of and in those sad moments I found it difficult to pull myself through them and it would be weeks of feeling terrible about myself like about life about everything so yeah I spoke to the GP and I feel so much more stable and in control of my emotions and the way that I deal with those emotions there are things that seem to trigger me having like a bit of an episode, I suppose, um, of me feeling sad. And it is usually to do with like family things, like um, abandonment, like me feeling like I'm being abandoned. Um, when the kids are really difficult, I do just, I, I find those things, stress is a real trig trigger for me in the sense that I then just start crying and I just want my mum. But I am able to get myself out of those moments and I think that is the good thing about kind of seeking help is I have had someone to talk to about it. Um, people have suggested me going to therapy or counselling or something and I don't feel like I need to at the moment because there I have this online world like online social media community that I can speak to I have my husband I have my mother-in-law like all of these people that are surrounding me with love and support I have all of those so I don't feel like I'm not talking about my emotions um in the sense that I need to seek out someone professional at the moment but that isn't saying that I won't um I just don't feel in that place at the moment. So yeah, a couple of weeks ago we had the joy, or I thought it was going to be a joy, of having my mum's dog, or my stepdad now, dog come and stay with us for five nights. Having the dog come to stay just sparked so many emotions for me. The sadness of this little dog, like I, when I looked in her eyes, I just felt like I was seeing my mum. You know, like I know it's not my mum, my mum wasn't a dog, but my mum had bought Millie for my stepdad and whenever my mum came Millie came and it just was it felt like a connection like my mum would have done anything for all animals um and so this dog was like her world and through all of like my mum's illnesses as well oh god don't cry um through my mum being unwell with kidney problems through her being unwell with covid the first time and then obviously the second time the long covid symptoms that she'd experienced like all of last year millie was by her side and i just felt like gratitude towards her but also like this sense that i wanted to protect her from like, everything you know i don't know like so when she was crying i just felt like my heart was breaking so i spent time on the sofa and then when she left it sort of felt like my mom was leaving again like i felt like 
I wanted to just have her and, and cuddle her and feel that like unconditional love that she gives, which is what a mum gives. Like, uh, and it is, I understand that probably sounds a bit weird. That day after I felt broken, like totally broken. And it was pathetic. <laughs> I felt pathetic um, that I was like so sad about a dog. And I just felt like I'd had my world torn apart again. And it just was totally weird. But this week in particular, we've had a few things with the girls and there's things happening with Elsa that I haven't yet spoken about like properly I keep saying I'm going to do a video and I really do need to do that video I thought I'd just kind of briefly touch upon those things so um, for anyone who maybe is new here I have three daughters Freya who is um, nearly 13 and she is diagnosed with autism has hypermobility as well and then I have Eva who is eight years old and she is neurotypical and then we have Elsa who is seven and we believe she also has autism like Freya but she has also been diagnosed with selective mutism and most recently a growth hormone deficiency. There's lots going on with my kids and I feel like with my own grieving journey there's so much energy goes into me just getting through each day that I've also got to put all my energy into my kids like every other parent would normally do and how I normally am it's like everything just drains me like I'm so tired at the moment like constantly constantly tired but anyway Freya this week um, we had a phone call from the school and Freya I think the baseline of it or the main thing of it is that Freya doesn't understand what is appropriate to talk about and what is not um she also doesn't understand the dangers of things um the complications of things that she might say I have fought so long, like I fight every day and did fight every day with Freya's previous primary school, so not the one that she was at when she left year six, but the one that we moved her from. And we fought so hard against them, like to get some support we would just never listen to. We moved her to the new primary school and they were amazing and they could see the struggles that we were having. They understood us, they understood Freya, they put support in place for her and now moving her to secondary school in a place that we thought she would also be supported and she is so not supported. Like we've had so many, well I've had two meetings with the Special Educational Needs Coordinator or the SENCO. There's nothing in place for her. Like she has a toilet pass. She's had one session with a teacher and that was this week. She's in year eight. She has a diagnosis of autism. There is so much more that school needs to do for her just as a whole, like as a general. But because she gets on well at school, because she's academically bright, because she doesn't cause a fuss, they aren't supporting her how, how I feel like she needs it. We fight, and I know it's easy, probably people say it all the time, but we fight so hard to keep Freya safe like she doesn't have any social media she doesn't have access to the internet like unsupervised her phone is totally blocked she can't use any safari any internet on her phone and I know that sounds like proper extreme and strict but countless times we've given her chances and she just blows them and does like things she definitely shouldn't um and makes herself in a dangerous position this constant battle and they they denied the the council people denied the HCP, the Educational Health Healthcare Plan, um, because we would like to move her to a special school where she's going to be supported more um, for her specific needs and understood for who she is. Yeah, it's just an ongoing battle with with schools and just everything. Then we move on to Eva, who is going, who is going through a lot. I can imagine it being really difficult to be in the middle of two children that or two siblings that need a lot of attention for their everyday needs and it's difficult and sometimes hard to remember that she needs that attention too she i'm so proud of her because there's so much she's going through and she's able to talk about it she's able to communicate with me her feelings grief in particular has hit eva terribly hard it's it's horrible to see an eight-year-old so sad and so broken just like I've been feeling it's really hard to witness that she has always been the little light in our life you know she's she's always the sunshine she's so happy and bubbly and energetic and just full of life since my mum since February that light just went out and she even said it the other day to us she said mummy I just feel like my light has gone dark and it just can't go bright anymore without nanny and it's just 
sad. Like it, I, I always say these things. I, I, it's so hard to find the words to describe feelings of pure brokenness and raw emotion. And there's so many times where she has these nights where she just can't get to sleep. It's when it's silent and then she has all the thoughts going through her head and trying to process everything. And it's just horrible. Uh, and then we move on to Elsa, who we're still waiting for an autism diagnosis, like the assessment. She's already had two and they're just not sure because they can't decipher selective mutism and, and autism. We had a long conversation with her actually the other night, which was really lovely and so insightful into her life. Like she said to us that she felt sad at school, which we have we have spoken about with the school. She feels sad at school and that she feels like she can't express her emotions because she's scared of people looking at her. She's crying. It feels like she can't talk to some of the teachers unless it's really important, she said. We tried to ask her how it feels, you know, sometimes. She was just so clever, like, explaining how it feels like the words are in her mouth, but she can't speak them. And also, like, really devastating to think that she isn't comfortable at school. The school see her as a happy child. And this is where the masking comes in of autism and things, but also having, a like, a social anxiety disorder. It must be really, like, difficult. I, I struggle with social anxiety, but it must be quite difficult to be sort of stuck in your own head. So yeah, we spoke about that with her. She's had a little bit of a big week because the flu vaccinations or the flu immunizations were happening and she hates that sort of thing. She was really, really, really scared. The school were brilliant and they allowed Eva to go in and hold her hand with her. And so she's had that done. So that was, we're so proud of both of them. But that caused a lot of anxiety as well. Also with the growth hormone deficiency, which I will talk about a bit better, but she has to have injections or she will have to have an, one injection every day. She's about 18 years old, so it's it's intense. And we explained it all to her because we needed to make a decision on devices that we're going to use to do the injections. And we wanted her to be a part of that decision because it is her life and it will be her life for like 11 years. So it was important to involve her in that, but it's obviously caused her greatly and rightly anxiety about it so um that's playing a lot on her mind so we've had quite a few nights where she just won't go to sleep or she'll sleep for an hour and then she'll wake up and will not go back to sleep crying inconsolable inconsolably um so it's been a really difficult week for the kids and i just feel a bit drained <laughs> to be honest like it's saturday now one of them is with the mother-in-law eva's with the mother-in-law and the other two are, they're playing really nicely actually i did pancakes i sat down and i just fell asleep um it's midday there's no reason for me to be asleep right now uh, I, I do feel sorry for my husband um in all of this there's been a lot of tension hello cat there's been a lot of tension and it's probably hard for him to know how to support me through this because he's not experienced the loss that, that we are all experiencing in the same way. I do feel sorry for him and I, I'm trying to be a good mum and a good wife because life does need to go on at some point and we, I do have to live with grief. All of the waves and emotions that come with the grief, I've got to learn to live with forever. I spoke to him and I just told him how appreciative I was of him of his support, of his love and patience with me. There's another word for it, but just just persevering with everything that I've been throwing at him. Yeah, it's just been nice to know that I have him there, even through the bad, like the really bad times when I've hated on him. <laughs> he's still there, you know, he's still there to, to big me up, keep me going. And so yeah, I am grateful for those around me. Um, ow, that hurt cat. I don't know what else there is to like discuss I suppose and as an update I do we've got a couple of blog things coming up so that's good but that's been quite quiet recently and that's probably not helped because I've just like lost there's nothing going on and there's so much going on but nothing going on like keeps me going so I just sit and watch like Netflix yeah if you are going through the same things that I am do reach out I'm on social media um Instagram mainly and I'm always there to have a chat. Sometimes I don't find the words, but yeah. Thank you for watching this really long out update video. <laughs> the cat is like stabbing me with his claws. Um, I'll see you all again in my next video. I think we're gonna have some Christmassy things coming up soon because we're going to uh, Christmas at Bedgebury. 
uh, which is very exciting, never been there before. We've got Marsh Farms Christmas Grotto coming up. I really love Christmas. I think I might put the decorations up soon. I'm also going to do or attempt to do Vlogmas as a way to kind of bring me back into vlogging. Um, we've got my granddad for Christmas as well for a couple of nights. So yeah, just just some exciting things coming up. But um, yeah, thanks for sticking around and I hope you're all well. Please stay safe and I'll see you all again very soon. You all right down there? Hey, with your stabby claws.